My name is Jason. And my name is David. And this is a comic strip AP of Dungeon World featuring the story of Domenico Castafiel. And when we last saw Domenico, he had just charmed the necromancer Mog in her shop, Mog's Hogs, where she sells uh, bodies, <laughs> specially preserved bodies for, I guess, other necromancers or or maybe doctors or, uh, or physicians or whatever, right? Uh, so... You've just charmed her. Uh, She just invited you deeper into her abode for tea. And I think I'd like to just kind of summarize the tea scene, if that's all right. I'm not sure I'm interested in RPing that. Um, All right. But here's how I want to do it. So Mog's, as we described last episode, Mog's place is really kind of like... It's interesting, but gross, right? I mean, you've got all these bodies. You've got her, like, digging around inside of them. Uh, it's just, it's it smells like this really strong chemical smell. And it's in the Black Nest, which is, like, a very, very, like, dangerous, filthy place in the city. And yet, and yet, you find something surprisingly uh, charming, possibly even sweet, about this tea with Mog. I'd like to know what it is. You know, it's strange uh, that that Mog does this, but she actually, she clears her table, her work table, because it's the only table she has in here, I think. Uh, So she just slides the bodies onto, onto additional chairs, and then she sets tea for all of them. Uh, as if it's like a little girl's tea party, and these are the dolls. And she uses really fancy china, and she addresses each of them as she pours the tea. And it's kind of creepy, but it's kind of sweet at the same time. <laughs> okay, nice. <laughs> Good. Well, so um, how, how does your pitch go? You know, she's, she's under the charm, so she's sort of predisposed to being friendly with you, but it doesn't mean she's going to necessarily do what you say, right? It just means she's open to the discussion, right? So what, uh, what's your approach? Like, what do you say to her? How do you try to convince her to help you out with this ritual? <clears throat> sure. Uh, so I, I volunteer to pour the tea. Like, with, uh, I'll, I'll get that, and, and I actually, like... She's like, oh, oh, don't forget the guests or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> um, it's very, it's very, very good breeding showing there. It's your, it's your fine upbringing, your fine Castafiel upbringing showing the manners at the table, right? Right. And um, and the pitch is, is thus. Uh, Mog, I have an interesting proposition for you. Oh, <laughs> I'm not really marrying age anymore, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, Mog, Mog, it's not not that kind of proposition, though you are quite a looker. And she, uh, she kind of like, um, she kind of bats her one good eye, you know, and laughs. So. <laughs> no, this sort of proposition is more the magical mystery kind of proposition. The kind that could use a good, skilled necromancer. Oh, I see, I see. So, well, what's it going to be then? You got, you got a little body in the closet that you want to do unsavory things with? Is that what's going on? Have I got you figured out? Oh. You nobles, you're all alike. Oh, Mog, please. You know, you know you're the only girl for me. Give her a wink. Uh, she uh, haplessly tries to to wink her eye, but there. I look, I look around. I look at each of the guests. I'm like, do do you know a good necromancer around here? One that one that might know a thing or two about about finding a small creature that might could go inside of a body and seek out strange and and terrible things and eliminate them. She's like. I don't know nothing about no small creatures going into bodies, but I know a thing or two about human anatomy. I know a little bit about the the darkest inner workings of our squishiest bits. I might be able to help you with this um, procedure. What what sort of what sort of endeavor are we engaging in, Domenico? 
I look at the bodies that are set up, set up, set around like guests, as if as if they might hear us. And I and I lean in, and I'm gonna whisper, whisper to Mog, what, what can you tell me about perpetuating life through magical means? And she gets really excited, right? She's. She's she's from a long line of resurrection men and resurrection women, right? Their whole their whole you know reason for being, their their whole reason for um, for exploring the darker mysteries is to prolong life, right? And she gets very excited, and you can tell she's excited because she she kind of like smiles a really wide grin, you know, sort of gap tooth grin and her tongue. She like excitedly runs her tongue along her, along her teeth and through the little, through little gaps where the teeth are missing, kind of like stabbing back and forth, probing in and out. Right. And just kind of like, like, mm. Uh, yes, that's that's a very very interesting idea. I might know something about prolonging life. I can help you with this, but first, first, before we begin the negotiations, we've got to do something about him. And she's looking directly across the room, directly out her window, and you can see now that like. From the table, her little table, she has a really good view straight out into the black nest, right? Like through her window and straight out to the black nest. And you see um, the little boy from back up in the bottomless tankard. You see him like clearly like kind of trying to hide behind, you know, behind a, a pole or something like peeking into the window to see what you guys are doing. What do you do? Oh, I close I close my eyes and I exhale. <sighs> this little boy cannot leave well enough alone, Mog. Uh, please, if you would, act as though uh act as though I've just stepped in the other room to refresh the pot. And I grab the I grab the pot and head out of the view of the window. And I'm going to try and uh cast invisibility and turn myself invisible so that I can go and ambush the boy. That sounds good. Um, go ahead and cast it. All right. Nine. I will take a minus one ongoing as I sustain this spell. As you are sneaking off to cast your spell, we'll talk about what that looks like in a minute. Mog kind of whispers to you. She says, there's a hammer over there in the corner. One quick, quick, fast blow to the skull. Hmm. He looks about 11, 12 years old. One quick blow will take him down. That's about right. Bring him to me, eh? When you're done. Give her a sinister smile. Oh, Mog, you always have the most wonderful notions. I've got a notion for profit. I could get a good price for a body like that. Oh, Mog, please. You know, you know you're the only girl for me. Give her a wink. Uh, she uh, haplessly tries to, to wink her eye. <laughs> but there... <laughs> Hi, this is Jason from the Gauntlet Gaming Community. If you enjoyed this episode of Comic Strip AP, please consider supporting the Gauntlet on Patreon. Our page can be found at patreon.com forward slash gauntlet.